Next speaker is someone who's been lost in the darkness for a long time. Someone who knows about pain and suffering. A man who knows what it feels like to be a nobody. A man who has also found the light. Please, everybody, welcome Pedro Santos. Nineteen ninety three. My mother gave birth to me two twenty eight nineteen ninety three. She was fifteen year old, my father approximately twenty six. In the United States, a lot of people will say, Your father is a rapist. But in my country, the Dominican Republic, it's normal. I don't even remember seeing my father and my mother together ever. But I do remember what, that I was living with my mother alone. I remember when I was three years old, one of my cousins from my mother's side of the family stabbed me on my left eye with a sewing needle. Imagine the pain. I was rushed to the hospital and a surgery saving my eye. I remember living with my mother when I was four years old. She was acting differently, like she was going through something, sitting down walking around, sitting back down. I couldn't understand because I was too small, a little boy. Then she snapped, ven aquí, come here. She tied me by my hand, forced me to go to the bed and tied me to the bed, that way I couldn't move. Close the door, all the window and left. House made of wood, a roof or tent. Though the grid outside 90 degree, no fan inside the house. Mommy, mommy, mommy. For how many hours? I don't know. Probably six, probably seven. I was thirsty, hungry. I don't know how my uncle found out, but he broke the door. When he saw me, he rested his shoulder. I think he thought I was dead. He untied me and we hugged for a minute. I don't remember what happened after that. But I do remember around four or five o'clock, me and my mother went to the river. She needed to wash some clothes. She never told me this, but I know the reason why we went because she knew I liked to swim, so she needed to make it up to me. And our way back, we was happy. Then my mother stopped. I was confused. Then I see this man walking fast, a rubber bell from a tractor motor probably 15 times stronger than RTB wire. It was my father. He was very angry. My mother stopped paranoid, running around in circle. She couldn't go nowhere. To her left, a fence, thousands of banana tree. To the right, another fence, thousands of banana tree. Back, the river. Who gonna run that way? Don't do it, don't do it. My father walked to her, punched her, kicked her, stopped beating her with a, with a um, bell. After he was done, my mother ran off, screaming. I will never forget this. My father grabbed me. Then I heard some commotion. Don't do it, Daisy, don't do it. My mother was running back with a machete. She tried to kill my father, but some people prevent her, prevent her from doing it. My father took me. Since that day, I was living with him. This is the first time I found out I had a stepmother and a little sister. I didn't know nothing about my mother for three years. Then I found out she ran away to the capital of the country and took a job as a housekeeper. She used to come see me once a year for my birthday, bring me candy, thing I used to like, and then disappear for another year. Living with my father was horrible, very difficult, very tough guy. He used to do the same thing to my stepmother the same thing he did to my mother, but worse. I used to see this almost every week. The irony about the whole thing is that my stepmother used to do the same thing to my sister, and me and my father used to watch and do nothing. Then someday my father would get angry, grab the TV wire, beat me up with that, walk to the tree, break a branch, peel it off, take your clothes off, beat me up with that. Let's go outside the house, grab a cheese grater, 
Kneel there. Grab a rock over your head. Down to some mosquito, killing me. Don't do this to me anymore. You're gonna kill me. How long I was there? 30 minutes? An hour? I don't know. Because of my eye situation, because of the injury my eye used to twist since I was a little boy. I even called cataracts. I used to get bullied a lot. People used to call me names in school, in the neighborhood. My father told me, you're gonna be blind for the rest of your life if we don't get money for the surgery. So I say, well, I guess that's what it is. I was used to that type of stuff already. Then a miracle happened. My, mother said, my father said, do you know your mother's supposed to come today? I said, why? She outside, standing on the street, just looking this way. I looked through a window, and I saw her there. I ran, and we hugged. She said, go pack your stuff. We out of here. We're going to the United States. 2005, by the way, age of 11, I came to the United States, Long Island, New York. I received my surgery. My eyes were saved, but I couldn't see from it anymore. The doctor said the eyes still gonna twist for a few months until the eye healed. Then I started to go to school. It was different. People from different countries, you don't see that in my country. I was the only Dominican in my class. People started bullying me, twisting their eyes, calling me names. I used to act like I didn't care. I was used to it, but inside, it was killing me. It was making me angry. Then a boy from Central America sound the fire alarm. I was confused, everybody ran out. Outside, the police walked to me. Put your hand behind your back. I couldn't understand what he was saying. He grabbed my hand and arrested me. Somebody told him that I did it, and I didn't do it. I got scared, started to, to cry. I even pissed on myself in front of everybody. I was 11 years old. My teacher, Mr. Morales, he said, come here. I know you didn't do this. I know you know who did it, but I didn't say nothing. I was very scared. He said something to the officer. The officer looked at me. I was only in this country for four months. Let me go and did like this with my head. I tied a sweat over my waist. I didn't want nobody to see me like this. I went home. My mother never found out to this day what happened. I guess she had the first one. Then the, sc the school was closed permanently. We were transferred to another school, Hanson Middle School. I started to go there. A lot of violence between African American and Latinos. Most of them are gang members. Blood, SWP, 18th Street, all enemies of the MS-13. The area where I used to live, MS-13 territory. When they found out I used to go to the school, you belong to this gang, you belong to this gang. I don't know what you're talking about, man. I even got jumped a few times. Then I stopped going to school without my mother knowing. Then the school called my house. Hey, your son not coming to school. Problems with my mother. So I started to go back to school. This time I met some guy from, from El Salvador. Then I found out it was member of the 18th Street Gang. They bury enemy with the MS-13. I started to hang out with them. Then I started to smoke weed, drink. Then I started to have sex. Then I started to feel free, like I was different. Then I started to do mission for the gang for six months. Then before I was 13, I joined the gang. Years went by, I was doing horrible things. Trust me when I tell you. My mother tried to save me, but I was already gone. Then in 2010, when I was 17 years old, I committed a crime. One of, one of most, a lot of crime, more than the second degree. I was arrested. I was sent to Nassau County Jail to the adolescent housing unit. A lot of fight. They sent me to solitary confinement for a year. I was losing my mind. I didn't care. 
I'm never going home. That's what I thought my first time in prison. What do I know? My mother used to come see me and see me behind the wall glass every time. We used to argue a lot. Then one day I say, you think I forgot what you did to me? You're the reason why I'm here. Get out of here. I don't want to see you anymore. I don't need you. I don't need you. I went to my cell, angry. Thank God I wasn't out of lesson. And in solitary confinement. The officer came to my cell. What's wrong with you? You gonna do that to your mother? What about if she died today? Then I thought about it. I was holding all that hate for many years and I didn't even know it. Can I go back? Yes, I went back. I had a conversation with my mother that day, the first time. She explained every, everything that happened. And then I understood it wasn't her fault. We hugged and we forgave each other. In 2012, I was sent to the state prison. I started to attend my programs. Years went by, still was doing the same thing. Hanging out with gang members, consuming a lot of drugs. Yes, I consumed a lot of drugs at that time. I'm not ashamed to say it. it took me out of reality. It gave me freedom. It gave me peace for a few minutes, a few hours. Then one day I was transferred to Arica Correctional Facility. My first day in the yard, I got into a fight with two MS-13. I was sent to solitary confinement for 90 days. After a few days of being there, this guy knocked on my wall. He said, hey, what's your name? What you here for? Mind your business. And I didn't say nothing else. Then something was bothering me. Go talk to this guy, go talk to this guy. So I knock on the wall. Hey, man, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to say that. Hey, it's okay, I knew you was gonna come back. Hey, how you knew that? Because I can tell you a good guy. You cannot hide that. He said, my name is Keith Hart. I've been on the box since the 90s. I'm never gonna get out. I don't wanna get on your business, but I can tell that you're doing all of this for the game and your former friends, I'm pretty sure they don't come to see you. They don't write you. I'm pretty sure your mother's the only one that come to see you. I say, hold on, I gotta do something. I went to my bed, put a sheet over my head, and start to cry quietly. The reason why I did it, I remember one day that I went home late, probably three o'clock in the morning. When I opened the door, I was very drunk, probably high. My mother was waiting for me there. You're gonna kill me. You're gonna kill me. We got into a big argument. Then she walked away. She said, I'm done with you. Then she stopped. He said, Prince, that's what my family called me. The reason why you're doing this, your friends, when you get killed because of the thing you're doing, they're not gonna go see you and put flowers. When you get arrested, they're not gonna go see you. I'm the only one. May my word remember that. That's why I cried that day in that cell, quietly, because I remember what my mother said years before my arrest. Then I was sent to this facility in 2018. Something in me was different. I couldn't figure it out. But the old man still was bothering me. Still wanted to be a gang member. I still wanted to do things. Lose myself on, on the crowd. Be free. I didn't want it to go back to my old me anymore. But then I started to think, I want to be free again. How my first wife gonna look, my children? Then I started thinking about my miserable life. How I'm gonna change it? Then I started to go to church. I met Dick and Lay there. He my witness. He used to preach. I used to talk to somebody else. Hey, stop talking. I didn't care. You don't know me. But then one day he said, Moses, 
he killed somebody. James, he did these things. But do we remember them for that? Or the thing they did after? What about you? Do you want people to remember you for what you did? Or what you did after? He, no, he don't know this until today, but I changed my life completely. He gave me the opportunity to translate the service in church, even though I don't speak English that well. But he always told me, you're going to do it right. Then he gave me the opportunity to work with him in the office. Why is this guy doing this for me? I guess he was giving me a second opportunity to prove myself. Then an officer gave me an opportunity to work in the hospital, even though a lot of people say we don't want him here. But he gave me a second opportunity to prove myself, and I tried my best to do that. Then I attended my GD. Then I called my friend in a three-way. Hey, I'm out. I don't want to be in the gang anymore. I'm doing 20 years to life. If y'all don't come see me, do whatever is best for you. It was easy for me to get out because of my status in that gang. But it was difficult for me to make the decision to get out because that was the only thing I knew all my life since I was 13. I didn't want to go back to the old me. Yes, I applied for Ball College. They also gave me a second opportunity, and I took it. Yes, I still get angry, frustrated. Sometimes I even say things I don't want to say to people. Every day I try to be the best person I can be. Yes, I lost myself. I'm trying to find my way back. The reason why I'm here today in prison is because when I was four years old, I started loving myself. If I don't love myself, I cannot love anybody else. For many years, I tried to do all bad things to people. A lot of people used to point finger to me. You're going to be this. You're going to be that. You're going to be a bad guy. And then I started to believe in myself. And I'm here to tell you that not everybody in prison is a bad person. Some people fake it. Other people don't know better. Other make mistakes and they learn from it. They didn't know my story. That's why they used to point finger. But now you do. Thank you.